Hello, and uh, thank you for logging in to listen to this talk on studying physics at Bath. So my name is Patricia Shardy. I'm uh, part of the admissions team, but I'm also a lecturer in, in the Department of Physics uh, within the Astrophysics Research Group. So over the next 25 minutes or so, I want to give you a little bit of an overview of the physics department, how it would feel as a student to be there and give you some details on the different courses that we offer. So these are listed over here on the left hand side. We have three principal courses. So those are in physics, physics with astrophysics and mathematics and physics. And they are offered at different degree levels. So we have the BSc level and then we also have the MPhys and MSci level. So that's where there's an additional year. Now I will go into greater detail on what actually is involved in these different degrees and the course structure. All of these also have the opportunity to be able to have a placement year within the second and third year of the degree course and also a year abroad, a study year abroad. So first of all, just a few bullet points here um, to kind of summarise some of the key aspects, I think, or some of the key information that I want to communicate with you about physics at Bath. So first of all, it's important to know what the department, what the size of the department is like. So we're a middle sized department. We have 40 academic staff and 130 new students or so every year. An important point um, to, I think, let you know, because we realise that there might be uncertainties in knowing which degree course specifically you want to do um, if you come to the University of Bath. So there is considerable flexibility between the courses that I've highlighted in that first slide. And so that is very much there on purpose. The courses have been structured and designed in such a way to allow that level of flexibility. As I've already said, we do realise that it's hard to get it right first time necessarily. So that's flexibility within the different courses themselves, also within the BSc or the four year equivalent with or without placement, for example. And so again, I will go into a few more details about that later on. Another uh, point to highlight is that we do have a comprehensive tutorial system which is seen very beneficial both for the lecturers themselves but also for the students. So what this means is that as a new student you will be assigned into tutor groups so you will be in groups of four or five or maybe even six students with your tutor and as a tutor group you will meet once a week um, every week for one hour um, with your tutor during the first and second year of your degree. And the, the thinking behind these tutorial groups is that to provide both pastoral and academic support. So typically in the tutorials, you may well go through problem sheets or some complex um, aspect of some lecture notes that you went through that week. And it's very useful to discuss that with another member of staff, but also with your peers. It is also a place where we can bring up any kind of issues that may have um, developed uh, general university issues, uh, but also importantly, there are relationship forms between the tutor and the tutee. And so after the second year, when these um, tutorials are no longer timetabled into the uh, week. Nevertheless, that um, relationship is still there. And so the tutee is somebody that the student should feel comfortable uh, approaching with any kind of concerns or problems or questions or they need reference letters in the later years during their, their degree course. Now, it is research informed teaching that takes place at the University of Bath, and so I will go into greater detail in that in later slides. But again, we do see that as a very positive aspect of the quality of teaching that takes place, that all our lecturers are involved in world leading research. And then finally, but not at all leastly, is it is a friendly and challenging environment. Um, I think any students who come to visit the university and the department do get a sense for that. Of course, it's difficult to portray that um, in the current situation where it's not possible for you to visit, but I will give some examples to be able to show how, in what ways, uh, you know, the, the friendliness of the department does come through. So first of all, to just give you a little bit of an outline of the course structure themselves, uh, for each of the different degrees that we offer. So starting with the BSc degree courses in all subject areas, so physics, physics, astrophysics and maths and physics. So they all have um, uh, this kind of structure that's shown here in this figure. So importantly, in the first and second year years, uh, there all the courses are mandatory. So here 
The feeling is that it's important for all students to be able to cover the core physics, mathematics, lab and computing units that they require in order to be able to complete a degree to the level as expected with um, any degree of the title shown here, and also to allow them to be able to pro progress in their final year in more specialised areas. So they do need that fundamental knowledge, which is what is covered in the first and second year. But to counterbalance the fact that it's mandatory in the final year, then students do find that they have an awful lot of options um, of a wide range of topics that might kind of be their, their area of interest. So this is covering medical physics, networks, laser physics, um, general relativity, uh, superconductivity, um, galaxy evolution and cosmology. So there's an awful lot of choice there for students. Now, sandwiched, you can see here, between the second year and the final year are the possibilities of doing a placement year and also a study year abroad. So both of which I will go into more detail in later slides. But now I just wanted to show where exactly they fit in into the course structure. And then depending on whether you decide to, to take this these optional years or not, you, you finish the degree after either three years or four years of starting. So if we then look at the MSI mathematics and physics degree, this is actually very similar for the first, so three bars that you see here, the first, second year, an optional year, and then there's the penultimate year. So the first and second year course, again, everything is mandatory. In the penultimate year, there's much more choice again, and all the units that I listed in the previous slide as optional courses, they're available also uh, as an MSI student, but there's not quite as much choice. So there are are still some, not, not as many as in the first and second year, but there are still some mandatory units which are necessary in order to reach a certain level of knowledge to be able to do the MSI final year at kind of the detailed level that it is covered in that final year. So in the final year, you do a master's level final year project and then a range of core and optional advanced master's level units in mathematics and physics. And so again, depending on whether you choose the optional year or not, you end up the degree with a four or a five year um, course. And then finally, the emphasis physics and the emphasis physics and astrophysics. It's got some similarities to what we just saw with the MSI maths and physics, but there are a, a, a few little changes or a few little differences here in the emphasis final year. So again, first and second year, these are fulfilling those mandatory fundamental topics that need to be covered. You have the optional year for a placement year here, but now the emphasis study year abroad is no longer an optional year. I mean, it is optional, but it now is part of the penultimate year so it does count towards the degree and so if you choose to do an emphasis study year abroad is effectively covering the same unit that you would be doing um, as a third year student at the University of Bath but in a different location and then the emphasis final year project there there are also some differences to the MSI uh, structure that we just saw. So there is a semester long MFIS research project that takes place in that final year and that happens in the first semester of the final year or students can choose to do a six month MFIS research placement elsewhere. So instead of if students do it elsewhere rather than just doing a semester long which starts kind of from October through to December research project within Bath. They actually do a six month emphasis research project going on from July. It starts in July, the summer uh, prior to starting the final year of the degree. And then the second semester after Christmas of the final year is similar to what we saw in the previous slide. This is an advanced uh, master's level units. So really cutting edge uh, science being um, um, taught at these um, real kind of research level active research level um, units. And so depending on whether you choose to do the optional year or not, then you end up with either a four year or a five year degree course. Now, teaching, so uh, there are around 20 contact hours a week or so, and these are taught in a variety of settings. And so a large fraction of the courses that are taught, of the units that are taught, are done in lecture theatres, and certainly in the first 
uh, two years where the courses are mandatory. These are going to be in large lecture theatres. Um, this is deemed as a very efficient way of uh, communicating the information and, and being able to kind of address a large student audience. But of course, this isn't sufficient and we are aware of that. And so this is then balanced with, I've already mentioned the tutorials where it's possible to discuss with peers and with another lecturer, like your tutee, um, any problem classes or any kind of details of any lecture notes any of the material that you've covered that week but then there are also with every single unit that you take there are problem solving classes and see these are the opportunity for you to be able to go through problems to be able to put what you've learned in the lecture theatre into practice and have their um, postdoc researchers the actual lecturer themselves or PhD students to be able to help you a little bit work through those problem uh, classes and then there is also a lot of emphasis within uh, the physics department on laboratory and project work. Uh, this is especially the case for the physics and physics with astrophysics courses, where um, typically for lab work, you are spending two afternoons, uh, sorry, two half days a week in that first and second year in the lab, um, not quite every week. So a third of that time is actually spent um, in a PC lab with computing problems, but there is a significant fraction of time in the laboratory. And so this is again an opportunity for students to be able to get a little bit hands on rather than just being um, kind of taught by by rote um, certain aspects of physics that are contained within the degree course. So a lot of what I've been describing so far is a little bit an echo of what takes place in other physics departments or across the country at different universities. So I just want to take a few slides now to highlight why Bath. So what is unique about the physics degree course and the physics department at Bath um, that might be right for you? So first of all, if I just go through rankings and career prospects, so we are top 10 for graduate prospects for physics and astronomy. So this is from the Complete University Guide 2020. We were fifth for employment after six months for physics and top 10 for graduate prospects for physics and astronomy. So, you know, we are um, rating well in um, in the rankings and in, and, and in the career prospects. But if I now take a kind of a more personal uh, look and present to you more details about the, the kind of physics department itself on what is special about our department. So it is research informed teaching, as I already said. Now, what this means is that all the lecturers or the vast majority of the lecturers which are within the department, they are uh, world leading researchers in their field. And so this is relevant to you as students because this research does feed through to the lecturers that they, the lectures that they are teaching. This is especially the case in later years, so in those penultimate and the final year of an emphasis degree course, for example, where the kind of material that's being covered is really at that, that kind of advanced level. Um, material. Now the research groups and centres that exist within the physics department, there's the Astrophysics uh, Research Group, there's the Centre for Networks and Collective Behaviour, the Centre for Photonics and Photonic Materials, the Centre for Space, Atmospheric and Oceanic Science, the Nanoscience Research Group and Theoretical and Computational Physics Research Group. And in the last uh, research excellence framework that took place in 2014, 91% of the research uh, taking place within the physics department was defined as world leading or internationally excellent and we were ranked fourth for impact of research in the UK and so this does feed in not only in the actual lecture material which I've already touched upon but also in the project work so a couple of times I've kind of highlighted the fact that there is an emphasis on project work either within the laboratories themselves or in the final year emphasis research project for example and so those projects that students are doing are going to be offered by lecturers within the department so uh, more often than not they are in the area of research of that um, lecturer themselves and so this is again an opportunity for students to be able to participate and experience in this world leading research and so some of the facilities that are available are listed over here. So some of these are actually on site. So for example, the Center for Photonics and Photonic Materials, the David Bullitt Nanofabrication Facility, the High Performance Clusters, those are all on site on campus at the University of Bath. Then there are others, such as for example, the telescopes and radio telescopes, they are not on site. However, um, 
in all these centres that are shown, either there's an opportunity in these research projects for undergraduates to use the facilities themselves if they are on site or to use data taken at these facilities. And so in that sense, these kind of are real projects and real data, they're not just kind of pretend data that have been accumulated, toy data that have been accumulated for a research project. So if I just focus a little bit on the emphasis that we do put on team and project work, we see this as something that's incredibly important, not only for students to be able to develop um, themselves in learning how to figure out problems within teams, but also as a way to actually be able to implement what is taught in the lecture theatre, for example. So in the first two years, there is pair and group project work taking place within uh, the actual laboratories themselves, within the first and second year laboratories. So that's two half days per week, more or less, but then also some PC labs going on. But then that develops onto kind of more um, detailed research work. So there's the professional placement year, for example, there's computational physics where more uh, large projects uh, are defined and, and needed for that particular unit. And then also there's the emphasis research project preparation. So this is once again, research work, getting ready for the final uh, emphasis semester long research project that some of you students might be taking. Uh, or the six month emphasis research placement, of course. Now, I've put quite a lot of emphasis on research projects at the moment, but we do have other project work. So in the BSc um, degree courses of the final year project, or there's an industry team project, or there's a communicating physics project. So the industry team project, these are projects which are done rather than uh, in pairs, such as the final year project and the full semester emphasis research project. Um, they are actually done in groups of five or six and they are set by uh, external industries where they have some problem that they want a group of uh, students from the physics department to investigate. So this might be from the meteorological department who want to find a more efficient way of being able to know what the weather is um, all, all around the UK. Or it might be as is shown in this particular photo over here the Bath Abbey who wanted to investigate whether it was possible or feasible to be able to cut down their costs by using the heat from the hot uh, springs that we have here, the natural hot springs, to be able to redivert them under the abbey in order to have underground heating. And then communicating physics projects, this is for students who think they might um, enjoy a career in precisely that in communicating physics. So as, for example, uh, science journalists, um, and so what is done in this particular project is learning how to actually what language is necessary to be able to explain complex uh, concepts, physics or astrophysics concepts to different age groups. So it can be from adults to children to um, older people. So that's something that um, I know that a lot of students get a, a, a enormous satisfaction out of. So then moving on to placements. So, of course, this is something that there's a long lasting history at the University of Bath and which we are very proud of. And a very large fraction of our students do take the opportunity to go on placements and the experience that comes along with that. So we've been organising placements since 1966. It's a professional experience and it's normally paid. So, you know, why wouldn't it? You're doing a real service to the places where you actually do your placement. You're not just kind of making tea. And, and we do the universities stay in contact with the uh, uh, students when they go off on their placement to you know, make sure that that is the case. It's flexible opt in and out during the first year, uh, first and second year. So I had already in the second slide um, mentioned about the fact that there's considerable flexibility within the degree courses. So this also applies to whether you do want to do a placement or not. Now, um, by the second year already, um, CVs are being written up, students are already making decisions about what kind of placement they would like to do. Applications have to go out, interviews are typically happening after Christmas of that second year. So really students need to have decided um, by the beginning of the second year whether they want to do a placement or not. But certainly in the first year there's plenty of flexibility about whether students want to want to do that or not. And so the kind of work that you can do, well there's an awful lot of range. You know our, our long lasting history of actually doing placements means that we are able to offer placements and links with some of industry's leading companies and research institutes and the list is large now. So there's lab and field or office based um, opportunities out there. Now it is competitive 
as I already kind of emphasized on that first bullet point, this is kind of a real job. And so therefore, it is up to you as students to be able to put in good applications, to be able to put in strong CVs and to pass the um, application process and interview process. But there is full support at the university in place to help, be able to help you uh, throughout all those um, steps required to then secure the placement. Students who go into placements, they um, they kind of get, get an enormous sense of satisfaction out of it. Um, it provides them with personal contacts and networking and helps them decide what it is that they want to do after their degree course. Even if the placement is not necessarily what they want to do, it necessarily helps them understand what it is that they do or did did not like about their placement, which is all part of figuring out what you want to do after a university degree. And many students, um, who do find that placement is really what they, the, the kind of placement position that they sought was actually what they do want to do in the future. It's common um, to come out of that of the placement with, with a job offer after the university degree. And so to give you some um, examples of where physics students uh, take professional research placement, there's a long list here. This is not at all the complete list. At the same time, it is a very long, extensive list. I won't go through the whole list or expect you to read all of them, but I just want to highlight that there is diversity here. So from the research aspect, there's a lot going on. So there's CERN, there's the Basic Research Laboratory, the NTT Basic Research Laboratory in Japan. There's a Defence and Science and Technology Laboratory. Uh, there's also uh, kind of research facilities in France and in Brazil where um, students have gone to do either professional research placements, uh, the snow and avalanche uh, research uh, facility in Switzerland, but then also the Samsung, the Jaguar Land Rover, JB Morgan, Accenture, Siemens, GlaxoSmithKline, Bay Simpson. So just to give you an indication of kind of the vast majority, um, vast um, range of opportunities that there are uh, for these research placements. And then within our department, it's uh, between 30-40% of students that go on research placements. Now study year abroad is also uh, something that is kind of we've had a long-standing uh, tradition of doing and we're proud of and this is once again a very uh, positive experience. Students always come feeling that they've gained an awful lot out of their experience with study year abroad in once again gaining experience of uh, a new culture, uh, new friends, uh, networking opportunities. And so what is shown on this slide is just a list of the different uh, universities where we have had partnerships and where students have gone in the past. Um, so typically the arrangements that we have with these other universities are on kind of a three year basis. And so they do evolve and they do change. So although I can't guarantee that the list that is seen over here will be the same by the time it comes for you to decide whether you want to do a, stu a study year abroad, um, it is very likely that it's going to be kind of a, a similar variety and similar length of universities on offer for a study year abroad. So that was kind of covering some of the more um, technical details, if you like, of the actual uh, degree courses and life within the physics department itself. But of course, that's only part of your experience uh, in coming to university. So life as a student also has the social aspects, which is, of course, very important. And we recognise that and pride ourselves on what we also offer as a university. Um, on the social aspects. So it's important to emphasise that we have excellent support facilities on campus. So uh, on campus is access to extensive health, housing, counselling, financial, legal and placement support. There are doctors and dentists on campus for students and 75% uh, of the University of Bath accommodation for students is also on campus. In terms of the campus, the campus um, is really very close to the centre of town. So it has both it offers both uh, the advantages of a campus environment, but also easy accessibility to town. It's a very safe campus. That's, of course, very important to emphasise. So we were ranked second safest university um, in the country in the Student Experience Survey 2018. And also, I think it's important to emphasise, especially, you know, coming from the physics department, that there is access to academic support facilities such as the Maths Dropping Clinic. So, you know, Maths is, of course, um, a core 
component of any physics degree and so for any students who might be struggling in that respect then there is the mass dropping clinics where actually students can go together with uh, mathematicians uh, in detail on the more kind of mathematical aspects of their degree course uh, at their own pace and it was the fourth in the student experience survey 2018 um, university of bath was ranked fourth so then looking at the playing hard, which is, of course, very important, there are hundreds of clubs and societies on campus. You'll be overwhelmed. And if uh, whatever aspect of, of socialising you like does not have its own club, then, you know, you just set your own up. That certainly isn't unheard of. We, of course, have the sports training village. So this offers a, a vast range of opportunities and facilities and students as a student at the University of Bath you have either free or at a reduced uh, price access to these facilities. There's also the Edge Arts Building. So this is where many of the arts and creative um, um, environment. So to counter kind of balance the physics and the more science focused degree course then over here is offering an awful lot of, um, of the arts. So from theater to um, music, uh, to dance and this is both as an audience member but also as participating as well that's on offer and then importantly there is a very active student body with strong community engagement at the university um, which is of course very important for students to feel that their, their voice is being heard now physics department specific we have the makers and coding club so in the makers club this is where students have the opportunity to uh, kind of create digital devices either uh, given a, a list of possible things that they can create or bring, bringing forward their own projects so this can be from 3d printers to laser cutters to microcontrollers um, robots automated telescopes an awful lot goes on in the makers club and the coding club then is also for students who have got an interest in developing further uh, beyond what is offered in the units, their kind of coding uh, abilities. And again, they can define their own projects here. And then there's also finally the Physics Society. So the Physics Society, they have an awful lot of fun. So this is a trip that they did in 2017 to Tenerife, where uh, they went and visited some uh, an observatory that was there uh, on the island. But I expect that they had uh, much more fun than just visiting the observatory. And so it is common for the Physics Society to organise these trips abroad. They have lots of socials as well, and they also have free public lectures. They do have an awful lot of fun. And so that was kind of a whistle tour, um, a whistle stop tour of the physics department. There is, of course, more information available online on all aspects that I've covered here. If you want more details, do go and follow this URL link. Thank you very much.